It was the morning of November 3, 1988 when General V N Sharma then chief of army staff received a phone call as he was about to leave the army house for his south block office. The call was by Ronin Sen, a foreign service officer at the prime minister's office. There is an emergency at the Maldives island, sir. The capital Mail Island has been taken over last night by some 100 to 200 terrorists apparently from Sri Lanka. President Gayum is in hiding in a civil home. His headquarters palace and the security services headquarters have been captured and a number of his minister taken hostage. We have an SOS for immediate help on a tenuous satellite phone from their tourism minister's house. We are trying to hustle the NSG for the task, but can the army help? Sen told General Sharma over the call. Of course we can help, Ronin. We will start working on it right now. You better hold on to that communication channel all day. When can we brief the PM at the operations room? replied General Sharma. And thus began the story of Operation Cactus, one of the few missions carried out by India. which involved all three arms of the defense forces army navy and air force the maldives comprising 26 atolls with over 1000 coral island was in a crisis a group of maldivians led by rook businessman abdullah lutufi along with sri lanka militants from the people's liberation organization of tamil elam sought to overthrow the government of president momun abdul gayum President Gayum's request for military interventions were initially denied by Sri Lanka and Pakistan and other countries like Singapore, the United States and the United Kingdom were unable to provide immediate assistance. When all hope died, he finally rang New Delhi and the Indian government led by then Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi responded swiftly. Mm-hmm. Within hours a meticulously coordinated military operation was set into motion involving all three wings of the armed forces. Momun Abdul Gayum who became the president of the Maldives in 1978 faced multiple coup attempts during his tenure due to political instability and economic troubles. Two coup attempts were made in 1980 and 1983 but the most significant of these attempts took place on November 3, 1988. The coup was masterminded by businessman Abdullah Lutufi and Ahmed Nasir who had paid a Sri Lankan militant organization the People's Liberation Organization of Tamil Elam to aid them in overthrowing Gayum's government. Nearly 100 plot mercenaries landed in the capital city of Mail before dawn using speed boats from a hijacked Sri Lankan freighter. With the help of a few locals they quickly took control of key locations including major government buildings, the airport, port, television and radio stations. The mercenaries advanced towards the presidential palace but Gayum was moved to safety by the national security adviser and then to a safe house by the defense minister. The mercenaries clad in lungi captured TV and radio stations but did not think of taking the telephone exchange and airport of the creed which proved costly to them. After Gayum reached out to India, the Rajiv Gandhi government quickly ordered Operation Cactus to beat back the rebels and rescue the Maldivians president. As General V N Sharma reached his South Block office on November 3rd for a cabinet meeting, he met Lieutenant General Rodriguez, who was the Vice Chief of Army Staff near the lift area. General Sharma briefed Lieutenant General Rodriguez about the situation. who then quickly coordinated with the director general military operations and alerted the air force and navy staff about the situation he as in lieutenant general rodriguez also personally rang the parachute brigade at agra to place the brigade tactical headquarters and one parachute battalion on 2 hours notice to move ex country by air transport for urgent operations The brief problem at the Maldives was indicated with detailed plans to follow by the DGMO. General Sharma wrote in Operation Cactus Indian interventions in the Maldives November 1988. Rajiv Gandhi presided over an urgent meeting which was attended by the three service chiefs. At noon on November 3, the cabinet committee for political affairs allowed military help for Gayum. and a message was flashed to the para brigade in agra 
by the time the paras led by brigadier Farooq Balsara had begun to plan the operations naval reconnaissance aircraft were already over the Maldives sending back pictures of the Hulule Air Strip which was to be the paras launching pad the operation began on the night of November 3rd when Ilhusin 2 76 aircraft of the 50th Independent Parachute Brigade, including the 6th Battalion of the Parachute Regiment and the 17th Parachute Field Regiment from Agra Air Force Station, covering over 2,000 kilometers non-stop. They landed at Mail International Airport on Hulule Island within 9 hours of the distress call. The Indian troops took position around the airstrip but there was no resistance. The mercenaries fled on hearing over the radio that Indian forces were coming. The mercenaries attempted to flee by hijacking a freighter and keeping 27 hostages on board, which included Maldivian Transport Minister Ahmed Mujutube and his Swiss wife Arsala. The Indian Navy played a crucial role in the subsequent chase. Frigates INS Godavari and INS Betwa intercepted the hijacked freighter off the Sri Lankan coast. As the warships closed in, the mercenaries retaliated by dragging two hostages to the bridge and blowing their heads away. Their bodies were strapped with live bows and thrown into the sea in the hope that the gruesome sight would deter the Indian Navy. According to a 2012 article on how India helped award the COPE in the Maldives, however, it's only strengthened their determination to bring down the mercenaries. After a tense standoff, the rebels surrendered and were taken abroad INS Godavari, effectively sending the co-op attempt within 16 hours. Not since we reached Dhaka in 1971 had I seen so much gratitude in people's eyes, said a paratrooper after the army cleared Mal at the mercenaries' menace. According to General Sharma, Gayum profusely thanked Rajiv Gandhi and requested that the commanding officer, six para and essential troops be permitted to stay on in Mel to train and recognize his security forces. Rajiv Gandhi agreed and these troops eventually returned to India a year after Operation Cactus. This also marked the beginning of the India-Maldives cooperation in defense. However, such friendships had taken a sharp turn now, as the pro-China politician in Mel now want the India soldiers out. The current Maldivian President Mohammed Moizu won his presidency on the India Out campaign, alleging that the presence of Indian troops in the Maldives affected the island nation's sovereignty. His party peddled the narrative that such military presence from another country was incompatible with the Maldives' fragile status as a small island nation. The Maldives' strategic location has made it a focal point for regional powers like China and India, both vying for influence. During former President Abdullah Yamin's tenure, the Maldives grew closer to China, which invested heavily in infrastructural projects like the China-Maldives Friendship Bridge. However, the pivot towards China raised concerns about potential debt, traps and excessive reliance on Chinese financing. India, historically involved in the Maldives affairs, has been cautious about its military footprints abroad. Indian officials have maintained that their troops in the Maldives are unarmed and assist in non-combat roles like training and rescue operations. Despite the recent backlash by Indian due to offensive remarks made by some Maldivian ministers against India and Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the legacy of Operation Cactus continues to resonate and is remembered with gratitude in the Maldives. Despite Moizu's pro-China stance, the common Maldivians still see India as their closest and most vital ally. Bureau Report, Big News.